I'm realizing now that I should have fixed this nonsense before I turned the camera on, but I don't really care. I watched Firefly Fire Lane. For a second, I don't know if that's what it's actually called. It is. And gosh, I love me some Katherine Heigl. And there were actually good plot twists, which is just sadly surprising. Some female friendship, some flashbacks, slash multi-timeline, but not like time travel or anything, just flashbacks storytelling, real issues, not all of the issues, but like real issues. This is like going to be a weird pet peeve, but also I think it's because it was written from a book which was at least like a couple years old. I have no idea. I didn't look it up. But having LGBT representation in a closeted gay dude. The acting was really well done, so like I can't even fault it or anything, but I just was almost expecting lesbianism. But I feel like that's also just where my head's at with representation and after watching a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race, I've definitely veered into why is this all like Guys, that's beside the point, but the acting was spot on. I definitely recognized, like, friendships and bonds that you could take a BuzzFeed quiz on. Like, which are you the kid? I literally have already forgotten the characters' names. <laughs> are you them when they were teenagers, or are you them when they're 20s, or grown women? Are you the brother and the best friend like what kind of bond do you have that's a whole also it was a kind of kind of tv that i feel like i haven't seen since the early 2010s <laughs> like it's been a while it's not exactly a rom-com but like and it's not exactly a sitcom but it's like drama that isn't so high stakes all the time. It's like friendship drama, which feels more realistic and also is just interesting. I watched the whole season in one sitting, but that's like not hard for me to do. And I hope that there's a season two, because at the end it was like, this feels like, this feels like they've set it up. So now if there isn't, the story hasn't been told completely. But also, again, I didn't read the book or have any knowledge of the book until after I watched the show. So could be wrong. And that could have been the whole story. And I will be extremely disappointed. Also, Catherine Heigl blonde. Not, not blonde. I thought that would take some getting used to, but it didn't really. So here we are. And then I still don't know the other actress's name. And I know her from other things, but I just can't remember her name. And I almost think that she's another actress that I can't remember the name of, who was like the original 911 operator in 911. And I feel like she also was there at the beginning of American Horror Story. There's certain actresses that I just cannot absorb their name. And it's not because they're, it's not actresses. There's certain actors that I just can't remember their name. And it's not because they aren't talented. It's just because they're so consistent throughout their performances. I remember them as each of the characters, but I also meld them into one character instead of being like, that's a person. For better or worse. But I know who Catherine Heigl is. The the youths. The, the teenage representations of the characters. And also a character's daughter. Were. I mean on different levels. Because the. Younger representation of the main characters. You obviously see more of in more depth. Because you're following them throughout the story. Than the main character's daughter, but they were all very good, which made me happy. And of the like main cast, there still isn't more women than men. And that's what I'm looking for. But there's enough that like, it felt a little bit more balanced because you don't, I might be lying to myself, 
I might just straight up be lying to myself because you have the main characters then you have like two guys in the 80s a crossover some moms dad from like I mean there's enough crossover there's enough there's a broad enough spectrum of female characters that I feel like Everyone can get involved in the main character's lives, but also in, I almost said lesser characters, supporting roles. So that made me happy. It wasn't just like, oh, here's the women. I don't, I don't know where I'm getting this from or like what's going on in my head, but there's still a lot of guys for a like f sort of chick flick in, I mean, like, I hate that phrase, but that's an easy way to describe chick flick in episodic form but it was very good i'm glad i watched it and it isn't i'm usually more drawn to like crime or sitcom e those are my two genres that i mean i watch everything but those are my two drama ja blah, 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 genres that i come back to and will watch things over now this i don't know we might come back to it in like whenever season two comes out or in a couple years and watch it again uh i like to have some TV turned on in the background because I get lonely. I also just like distractions because it gets me out of my head. The reality, there was so, there was, there was reality that hit in a way that like a lot of TV shows avoid. I don't, there wasn't really a lot of like racial diversity, which is something that I've become hyper aware of. And we had that, the, 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 the tiny bit of LGBT representation, but it, it's pretty basic. Still, it's nice to see like female empowerment stories with like realistic issues and still, of course, heightened because it's a drama and everything, but it was good. I did miss Catherine Heigl. I don't know, I remember there being drama or something with Grey's Anatomy, but, and I was like, oh, I guess I, like, I'm never gonna see her again. 27 Dresses is also my favorite rom-com movie. Which isn't on Netflix. They keep taking stuff off Netflix and Hulu, so if anyone has any good recommendations. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs>